Smart automation, better business. Learn how to optimize your business with Solved. Hello and welcome back to the Solved YouTube channel, your go-to source for revenue cloud and Salesforce assistance. My name is Jared and I'm a certified Salesforce consultant. And today we're going to be talking about how you can map from the product to the quote line within Salesforce Revenue Cloud. So if you're like me and you're coming from CPQ, this is very similar to twin fielding, where you would set up a field on the product and another field on the quote line, make sure they have the same API name and data type, and then data would magically flow through when you're, when you're quoting. It's a little bit more difficult to set up within Revenue Cloud, but a lot more dynamic. So today we're going to talk through how you can do that and what has changed in the new Revenue Cloud releases. All right, so to kick off this video, we're going to start with the fields being created. So assuming that you've already created a field on the product that you want to map to the quote line. And so we're going to jump into updating the product discovery context definition, showing you what needs to be done there, and then updating the sales transaction context definition, showing you what needs to be done there as well. And then we'll jump into testing it. All right, so a few call-outs I want to make before hopping into the demo within Salesforce. All of this can be done by following along with this instruction on the Salesforce help docs called create and map and installation date field in Revenue Cloud. I just talked to Salesforce support and they said they are working to update this documentation because currently this is incorrect, uh, which is leading to a lot of confusion. So if you did watch my last video on how to map from the product to quote line, that one is no longer correct and the process within this video is the correct blessed path from Salesforce. So before jumping in, make sure you already have your field set up on the product object and the quote line item object within Salesforce Revenue Cloud. And for sake of this example, I'm just going to use the headset product for demoing and I'm going to just make the same installation date field that you see in this documentation. So obviously it doesn't make sense to have an installation date field on a product called a headset, but just for the sake of demo and showing the functionality, that's what we're going to be doing today. All right, so we have the headset product set up. It's got the installation date field on it with a value. And what we want to see happening is when we add the quote line for headset to a quote, we'd want to see that that installation date maps correctly over to the installation date on the quote line. So not currently happening. So that's what we're going to build out now. So I'm going to remove this and let's make the updates. So jumping into Salesforce, let's go to setup and let's go to context definitions. We're going to want to go to our custom definitions and you're going to want to find your currently active custom extended context definition for the product discovery context. So you can see this is mine. Doesn't matter what it's called, but it's the one that I extended from the product discovery context, context definition. And so this is the one that we're going to need to update. If you were to watch my previous video, the original process from Salesforce here was to actually clone this whole context definition. That is no longer what we want to do. We want to make sure it's an extended version. And instead of cloning the whole thing, what we're actually going to do is clone just this mapping. And so that in essence is the main difference for the last one. But as you might tell, we can't clone it yet. What we have to be able to do is deactivate it. But if I go ahead and try to deactivate it, it's going to say, you can't deactivate this because you're using it. And it's being referenced by expression set, which is not very specific. What that means is it's referenced by your pricing procedure and probably also your qualification procedure and potentially other places as well. So let's go fix that. What we're going to do is one easy way is to go to product discovery settings to see which pricing procedure you're using here in the product discovery settings. So I know I'm using the product discovery pricing procedure. You don't have to come here, but it may help if you have multiple. So I know it's the product discovery pricing procedure, and I know that the qualification procedure is product qualification. So I'm going to come back here and you can search or go to qualification procedures, go to your qualification procedure, 
let's go to the actual page here to deactivate it. I'm just going to leave this tab open so that we can come back and activate it pretty quickly. And then I need to also go to pricing procedures. So I'm going to go to my pricing procedures and find the product discovery pricing procedure. And I'm going to do the same thing coming here to deactivate this. All right, now that those are both deactivated, I should be able to come back to my browse products context definitions and deactivate this. There you go. Now you're able to come here and say clone. You can rename it or just keep it as clone. Doesn't really matter. And this is where we're actually going to make our changes. But for now, I'm just going to go back here. And we want to make this the default before we forget. So first we're going to come here and unmark this as default. It's going to make us open a new tab that we can just exit out of and come here, edit object mapping, and mark this guy as the default. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want to do there. So from here on, the steps are exactly the same as they were before. Or we're going to edit this. We're going to make an attribute for the installation date on the category product. Make sure it's input output. It's going to be a date field and that's all good. Next, we're going to create a tag for that installation date. Save that. And now we're going to come back and edit this mapping so that we can map from the content product attribute or node. Content, okay, sorry, category product to the product object. So we're going to come here and add the product object. We're going to map from category product to product. And let's make sure installation date. Just makes it quite a bit easier to narrow down. Kind of map installation date there. All right. And that's the first part. The next part will be updating the sales transaction context definition. All right, so what have we done so far? We've mapped from the product to the category product. In order to fully get to the quote line, we need to now map from the category product node to the sales transaction item node. To do that, we're going to need to come back to our context definitions, and we're going to need to go to the currently active sales transaction context definition. One way to find that is to go to your pricing setup Look at what current pricing procedure you're using. So I'm using the custom revenue management default pricing procedure. Yours may be named something different. So you're going to go to that and then see what context definition is this using. That's the one you go to. So you go back to the context definitions. You go to custom definitions and find that context definition. And we're going to need to map again from the category product which is a node in our product discovery context definition to the sales transaction item node, which is a node within a different transact context definition. So to do that, let's go back here. We're going to use the, this, the product discovery mapping. So we're going to come here and edit this. And what we're going to do is add a resource here. So we're going to say select data source. And instead of setting a Salesforce object that we want to get data from, we're going to get data from another context definition. A lot of people mess up here by selecting the standard product discovery context definition. You don't want that because that doesn't have this special attribute you just made. You want the extended version. So let's select that. 
at that point, you should see the nodes that are part of that context definition show up along with the installation date attribute. So what you'll do is first make sure that on the sales transaction item node within this, for me, it's the pricing transaction context definition, but whatever sales transaction extended version of the context definition you're using, make sure you go there and create the attribute on the sales transaction item node. And that will allow you to then map not only the node sales transaction item to the category product, but also the attribute that you made, you can map that to the attribute on the category product. Then you successfully mapped from the product to the category product node and from the category product node to the sales transaction item node. Our next step is to map from the sales transaction item node to the quote line object. So we're going to jump back here and we just updated the product discovery. Now we're going to go to the quote entities mapping. So we'll edit this quick map. And to make it easier on yourself, go ahead and search for installation date in both searches. That will narrow down. And you'll want to, it'll be in your unmapped, but you'll want to map the installation date node on the left within the sales transaction item to on the right, the quote line item field that you should have already created. If you don't see it popping up there, then you'll just want to make sure that you have indeed created the field on the quote line item object. Once that's mapped, then you'll save it and we'll make sure that the, this context definition is active and we'll go back. And if it's not active, we'll make sure that the browse products context definition is active, activate it if it's not. And you'll go back and make sure that the product discovery pricing procedure is active and that the product qualification procedure is active. So those are the two things that originally we had to deactivate in order to deactivate the discovery context definition. So now that that's active, we can reactivate these and come test on a quote. So let's do it here. I'm going to refresh this just to make sure it's ready. And we're going to add that headset product. So if I go to the product, I see that there is a value in the installation date field here. And so we should see that value flow over onto the quote line when we add it. So we'll come here, go to hardware and let's add the headset. We accidentally added two of them, but that's okay. Let's go to one to make sure that that value maps correctly. So I'll go to view. And there we have it. Installation date correctly mapped. So now you know how to map from the product all the way to the quote line, mapping through two context definitions and two nodes within those context definitions. Please comment below if you have any questions, if you run into any issues, and we will make sure to provide a quick response. In the meantime, make sure to check out our other videos on Revenue Cloud and anything else relating to Revenue Cloud. Agent Force and Salesforce in general. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching. We can't wait to help you automate your business. Please like, comment, or subscribe for more.